Good morning. Welcome back. So today I'm going to give you a quick announcement, show you the few small changes that I made to the class website. And then as usual on a Friday, we'll do two things. One is to watch just a segment of a video on this period's digital tool, the new digital tool being Evernote. And then I will engage in the first demonstration of Evernote that was not done on Wednesday so that we could catch up with presentations and notes about the readings from the first textbook, What is the History of Knowledge by Peter Burke. So, of course, I canceled, we strike through the program, the original program for Wednesday, and just added that we continued on Monday's topics, and in fact, going back one week to Monday's topics about Google. I added two videos. You can find better videos around about Evernote. However, my concern was to find and offer you videos that reflected the major changes in the interface that occurred starting from about a year and a half ago with Evernote. So feel free to find other videos from other users and most things will still work in the same way. I wanted something recent or even current. That's why you see the first video that we'll watch today is from February 1st, actually, of this year. The other is from about a year ago. And, of course, we're not going to watch the whole, the entirety of these videos. In fact, we'll watch a segment of one. Feel free to watch the rest, or, as I said, especially if, if you are new to this app, Evernote, feel free to explore YouTube until you find a user or an expert that has a style of delivery that works for you, that resonates with you and helps you better, besides, of course, paying attention to the demonstrations and asking questions. I added the link to the homepage of Evernote and I will show you the plans and discuss that together before the videos. As usual, every class is being recorded, video are edited and then posted on YouTube. Normally, at this point, I'm able to create and post a video by the evening of the day of each class, which means that by tonight, you will find today's class. Keep that in mind. and. If you miss any class, do watch those videos timely. Don't wait too long. Moving on to week five, I added a reading that is one of the best you can find combining the idea of a second memory or a second mind or a second brain with a productivity tool such as Evernote. It's a blog, and it's entitled Zettelkasten, How One German Scholar Was So Freakishly Productive. And Zettelkasten is a method devised by a sociology scholar from the first part of the 20th century, Luhmann, and, of course, the meaning of the term and the meanings that this scholar associated with the term are explained in there. What's interesting, though, is that after the history of the term and the history of the method are introduced, and we're talking about someone who really used the file cabinet. The file cabinet and cards where he wrote in pen, right? But this model becomes then the basis for free-based tools such as Evernote. 
and this is the useful part and that's why I transferred it in here in this call box of course when you read the article you will find that every single point has a three to five line explanation and clarification although some of them are pretty clear you find these 12 principles so this is something to keep in mind especially if at some point during the semester you decide that your final project is going to be realized with Evernote because the final project has to be centered on one of the digital tools so it takes about 20 minutes to read this article it's simple simple reading very enlightening if you've been using Evernote already that will open you to new possibilities new options finally I just want to remind you that tonight the second written assignment and the third assignment of the semester is due inside a page a new page of notion you have to place a narrative with the title google me this and you have to share it with me giving me the rights to comment and edit the page so that i can provide the best possible and the most specific kind of feedback what is that you're supposed to place there it's a report and a reflection about your patterns of use when it comes to google searches you should be specific so if you have recent examples in mind or if you want to run a few test searches for the purpose of capturing the results before you submit the assignment you can also do that but basically these are the main points that you should be including what kind of stuff are you looking for on the internet both on the front of your personal life and also your academic life then what happens when you run the search between the time you type and press enter and the time you reach your destination you find what you were looking for what happens when the list of hits comes on the screen what is that you do normally are you able to scroll up and down read the key the quick the keyword in context passages the few lines the three lines that google will offer you and from there identify where you want to go what do you want to explore or what else do you do do you click several until you find the right one do you limit yourself to the first screen or to the second do you did you configure google to offer you 10 results per screen or 100 results per screen then after you click what is that you do are you usually able to find the results right then and there or do you have to scroll up and down or do you have to do some more exploration whereby you are being directed by Google to the right place? However, the information is in the vicinity, is not right uh, there, immediately accessible. You have to explore the sections or additional areas of the website that Google directed you to until you find the information. Finally, what kind of information will you be able to find what level of knowledge is reflected in the information that you find is it just a specific information is it a finite goal that prompted the search whereby you can say this search is completed there is nothing open it's not open-ended this is the result that i was looking for or is that result open-ending that is to say it's one of the possible answers or is the initial answer but there is more to be learned more to be found out and if you continue from there with follow-up searches or following the links that you find in the place that google directed you to what kind of intellectual mental process drives your additional exploration Okay, that would be 
the ideal template for this assignment. Of course, as I said before, if you do this through a test run where you simulate the kind of searches you would normally do, then you have the option, since you're delivering the final product of Notion, to capture some of the screenshots, place them inside Notion to make your presentation richer, clearer, more convincing. So you can include the autocomplete options or the first hits or the paragraphs in another website where you found the answer or you found part of the answer but you know that that answer opens up a series of new questions. So is it click, click, found or is it click, click and then the beginning of a process? Because you find that things that you are looking for are networked in terms of knowledge, are connected in different, to, to different places and other kinds of content. Of course, as usual, if you need my help, let me know. If you need more time for this assignment, let me know before the deadline and make a plan to see me or to find the uh, tools and the information that you need to complete this successfully. And once you share your page with me, what I do usually is open the page right away, check, see if the content is there, and then leave a comment, something as simple as, thanks, I will look at it within a few days, okay? So if you see that, you know that I've received your, um, your page, and otherwise you can contact me and email me. Oh, by the way, the announcement. The announcement was that I was able to correct everything, every single assignment, the two assignments that were due on February 11th, that is to say my digital life, the narrative, and the creation of a Notion page showcasing the features of Notion. I've corrected all of them. If you haven't seen my comments and the grade, go back to those pages and find them. Uh, I don't know how it works on your side in terms of notifications. I see a number with a red box in the top corner, top left corner of my Notion page, of any Notion page in uh, my browser, notifying me that there are updates and those updates can be changes to a page you shared with me or comments. However, I found that through the app, the Notion app on my phone, then I receive regular notification that I can pull down from the top uh, of, of my screen on the phone, and then I can expand each one of them and see whether it's a change, some kind of revising, or a comment, and from there I, I can go to the page quickly and leave the answer. So. This way I'll be able to be more prompt to respond to any inquiry by you. As I said before, this is the page of Evernote. Evernote was created, the company was founded around the year 2000. That was just a few years after the creation of the chief instrument of digital knowledge handling, which was the wiki. And at that time, the idea was to create what was called an info base or a free base, that is to say a database that is more free flowing, that is not hierarchical, that grows with you. At this point, it's being marketed as a note-taking tool. And then also there is this idea that you organize your life, that in life, these days you need to collect, store, archive a lot of information that you would have done 50 years ago by having some kind of box uh, with uh, old receipts and such, and now you can digitize everything because one of the big advantages, Evernote is not that powerful, but very agile. And one of the things that I like about Evernote is that you can take the phone, open Evernote, take a picture of something, and that picture goes into a note 
and that can serve as a reminder or it can be something you want to keep for future reference. As I mentioned, all the various apps that are active in this niche of the market, Evernote is commercially the most successful because it has the largest base of paying customers. Altogether, the subscribers to the service are more than 10 million. Of those, between one and two million are paying customers, people who have a subscription, and I'm one of them. And I've had one for a very long period. At this point, my collection of notes is almost around almost 10,000 different notes. And it's not the only collection, of course. I have hundreds of notes in Notion and about five to 6,000 notes in another textual project that is a half-baked app that I scripted. See here the various plans. So the free plan is what you need to get in order to complete the digital assignment on Evernote. Of course, if you already have Evernote, you, you use your personal account. I have the professional account. And one of the things that Evernote did a couple of years ago was to change the plans and to take some of the features, even important features such as advanced search out of the free plan out of the personal plan, they make it, they organize things in such a way that customers would be pushed into updating either from the free to the personal, or as I did, I've had the personal for many years, I thought the professional was just for organization, and then I had to switch to the professional because some of the features had been taken from my level of subscription. Free is all you need for the digital assignment that's plenty if you want to realize your term digital project with Evernote then frankly I would recommend that you take at least the personal or even the professional the prices you see here are monthly prices of course I pay less for a, for a yearly subscription to the professional I probably pay 99 dollars and 99 cents but what I'm saying is that you could wait uh, until March or April and then just subscribe and pay for two months or three months of the personal or professional level if you want to make your project with this app because after your first test, you like it. Or otherwise, as I said before, if you're a current user, if you're a veteran user, of Evernote and you want to use Evernote for the project, you just go ahead and use your plan, your existing plan. So again, from here, you can start, right? You click on the green button to get started. And then you have two options as usual. You can use Evernote from the browser. However, Evernote is not really like Notion. Notion the browser is plenty. In fact, it's much more practical to use Notion from the browser than from the desktop app. In the case of Evernote, it works in the browser, but not as well, not as smoothly as within the app. So I suggest that you also install the app on your phone, which is free as well. And the desktop version, if you're working on a Mac, if you're working on a Windows laptop, then at the top right corner of this page, you find the download button that will allow you to install the uh, desktop app, which has all the features and they all work much better from there. And I said, let's hear from one of the experts in this field. So you have, this is the host, Vladimir Campos, interviewing the expert, Stacy Harmon, who's a tech evangelist, 
who's focusing a lot of her work on Evernote. Disclaimer, she may be getting paid by Evernote to, to spread the good word, the gospel of Evernote. And in fact, I suspect that might be the case for some of the other productivity gurus who during the past two years switched, interestingly, from Notion. They were all excited about Notion. They went back to Evernote. Was it their personal choice or were they paid by the company? Uh, I, I think it's quite possible. We're talking about a big company with a big budget, so wouldn't be beneath them to buy their way into regaining some of the market they lost because really Evernote was really fashionable around 2014, 2015, and it's been kind of downhill from there, both because they were slow between 2015 and 2019 in introducing new features or a new interface, and also because there were some long-standing complaints that you find in their forums. I'll have to link the forums for you, but besides the official forums hosted by the, their servers, you find also a very active Reddit community. One of the constant complaints, and I've experienced that myself, was that you have a collection of nodes. You have several devices. With a free plan, you can only have two devices. With a professional plan, you can have as many devices with the phone, tablets, multiple tablets, computers, laptops, uh, as many as you want. So you have these collection of nodes that travel from place to place because if you want to use them even off offline, then you download them to every single device. And what happens? You don't get the same total number of nodes on more than two devices. And this has been an ongoing problem. It was particularly acute before 2020, then they've addressed this partially. So one device might say that I have 9,727 nodes, and another might say that I have 9,721. And of course, there are some conflicting nodes somewhere, but the system is not able to handle them and, and handle the alerts to that uh, as efficiently as they could, okay? So let's hear from the first video. She has this amazing definition of herself in her website. It starts like this. <laughs> I'm Stacy and I love Evernote. That's so nice. <laughs> it's pretty true. <laughs> She's also a productivity coach and a certified Evernote uh, consultant like me. Okay, I'll stop here. I just want to bring back to your attention a couple of things she said that are particularly important. One is, she said it quickly, but it, it's worth repeating that in the paid versions of Evernote, every scribble, everything you put in an ink note, an electronic ink note with your digital pen is recognized and indexed. Of course, depending on how good your handwriting is, the recognition might be just 80% or 95%, it's never 100%. Also, every text in every image that you bring into this. So if you are in a bookstore and you take a picture of the cover of a book that you want to read at some point or buy or give as a gift, and you just put it in as a picture, you put that in a note, the title of that cover, on that cover, the name of the author, etc., will be indexed. The other thing is the quick mention, of course, I will show you myself how the web clipper works, that whenever you visit a web page, you have various options. If you see something while you're reading that you want to preserve, but you don't want to clutter your database with excessive information, you can take a screenshot of a portion of a database, of a, of a web page, and send it to Evernote, and again, everything in that image will be indexed if it is textual information. Or you can click on a feature called Simplified Article, 
where everything will become a column, which is especially important for templates that are complex or websites that have a frame with a sidebar and that are e more difficult to capture. Everything become a vertical column. Pictures will be also placed linearly in a vertical fashion. And then before you send it to Evernote, you have the option of simply selecting. And within that modality, the selection becomes a highlight. So the moment you find something that you know you want to remember or you want to file, you switch into simplified mode and you finish reading this thing while you highlight a few things for future reference. That would be the option, as she mentioned, of smart filing, which means that Evernote will compare the text, the keywords in the web page you're trying to file with the rest of your notes and how they are placed, in which notebook, how they are tagged, and will attempt to place it somewhere. So my Evernote might say, after I select an article, I'll send this to 216. 216 used to be a course on Italian civilization that I taught up until 2016 or 2015, right? She hates it, I hate it too, because it's only right at best 50% of the time, but often less than 50% of the time. There are other integrations. You can integrate Evernote with Google. You remember how, what she said about searching, which is vital. I'll, I'll repeat that in a moment. When I do a search in Google, automatically Evernote, which is integrated in my browser, offers next on the right, next to the column of hits from Google, offers me options, meaning maybe you will find results that match the search you just typed into Google inside this note or these three notes or these five notes. And I can switch, I can click on, on the note and go see it in the browser, in the browser's version of Evernote or in the app, or uh, uh, I, I can just stick to Google. The thing she said about search is very important, especially if you're already users of, of Evernote. The initial approach to Evernote, and I did the same for, for a very long time, is to build it like a library. So I have information that I can put inside a note. A note can be put inside a notebook, and multiple notebooks can be grouped together, and that is what they call a stack, okay? So it's like the shelves of a library, right? Where you have a single book and content within that book. That would be the note. You have the shelf where books of the same topic can be found, right? I have a shelf where all the books about travel to Italy can be found. And that would be the notebook. And then you have all the shelves or all the floors in the library, and that would be a stack, right? And as Vlad, Vladimir suggested, once you have almost 10,000 notes as I do, and, and with time you end up with, what, 50, 60 different notebooks, you spend a lot of time, once you find something, trying to imagine where it belongs to and placing it in the right place, and it's not very efficient. Because the, the real strength of a wiki-like software or app like Evernote is that you don't need a hierarchy. The focus is on productivity. And links will do the same, will do the rest. So you just dump a note wherever you want. And either you trust the semantic keywords in the text to make it evident and visible at a search, which is kind of, of wishful thinking, or you add a few tags. And then it doesn't matter where those notes end up in. Because if you want to retrieve all the notes that would belong to my notebook on Western civilization in Italy, can be retrieved just by entering the correct kind of advanced search, which can combine not just one, but more than one tag, and also some keywords that will be found in the text. And this way, I'm not seeing storing and finding information as a chore. Because I just do it and forget about it. I read something in the morning, I, I send it to Evernote, and incidentally, she also mentioned this quickly, one of the advantages of Evernote is that if you ever need to store an email for future reference because it's from your boss, because it's about a promotion, 
because it's about a grant you want to apply to, you forward that email to your Evernote email account. Evernote accounts are associated with an email account. Mine will be andreafedi.be at and then a, an alphanumeric uh, code that corresponds to the server space where my notes are stored. And within a minute, that email reaches my uh, inbox in Evernote and then I can add a tab or two and keep that. I don't even have to archive or destroy or file older notes because it doesn't matter whether I have a hundred or a hundred thousand. What makes a note current will be the kind of tag that I attach to it. And then if I want to, I can simply attach temporal chronological tags. I can put 2022 to a note so that I know that if something needs to be current, I can limit the search to notes tagged with 2022. But it's a slippery slope. If you start tagging, adding too many tags, then that too is difficult to handle. One of the sh strong limitations of Evernote is that it doesn't have autocomplete for tags. So it's not like, well, I know this tag has to do with the history of the book. And, and this is the information I want to store there. But then I cannot just type history and see the options that I have in terms of tag. No, I have to remember exactly whether it's history of books, history of the book, uh, et, et cetera. So uh, that uh, makes it not as efficient. Let me give you a quick demonstration of what you do once you create an account in Evernote. Who's already using Evernote? Any current users of the app? Anyone who's used it in the past? Yes, okay, thanks. Let me make sure, okay, this is transferred. Okay, there you, there you have it. And so this is what you see in a typical configuration of the app. This is not the browser, this is the Evernote app. The typical configuration would be this, but you can just have the note here or have everything else. But there is a logic to this. This is the general, this is the local, this is the note, the specific, okay? The general is the sidebar where everything is accessible. I can click and see all of my 9,000, well, 9,727 notes. Or I can just see my tasks. I don't use it for tasks. I can click here and see all my notebooks and stacks. I can see just the notebooks that were shared with me by students in this class. I can start a work chat if I'm part of a team. I can see what was placed in the trash. More importantly, I can see all the tags and the tags can be sorted alphabetically. Can, there is also a way to group them. Okay, so this is the general. This is the various areas. Next, I have the local. That is to say, whenever I select anything in here, I have a list of nodes that belong to that area. Right now, I selected nodes. So all the nodes are in here organized by uh, time of upload. So the most recent to the oldest, if I clicked on any of the notebooks, then I would see just the notes in the notebook. And finally, of course, I see the note that I'm working on. But again, I could make this disappear and just concentrate on the note. So when you open this, you see there are various options. I can click on new, this green button here. And of course, if you have a iOS version, it'll be slightly different. If you have the Android version, it will be slightly different, okay? So don't worry if you have to adjust to the interface on your particular device. So I can just click new and the default kind of note will open. But if I drop this down, I see what my options are. I can create a new task. I can bring in an attachment. I can create an audio uh, uh, note and I can just create a note where I will ink. If I do this, this is not it. If I do this, I will only be able to uh, sketch on the note. However, if you just create a new note, 
then you have something that can combine various things. I go to this note that I created and you see, of course, this sea creature, sea monster can be resized. And I spent a whole 10 seconds drawing this with my Raphael digital pen. But let's start with the interface with Plath. You can see that within this note, which is a more advanced kind of note, well, uh, in the past notes could either be ink, electronic ink, or audio, or video, or typed. Now you can combine all of them, right? Because you can insert a, a calendar event and you can connect every note to your calendar, and vice versa. You can create a note for every event in your calendar. You can create a table, put a divider, attach a file, which will be indexed, attach a photo, and put a series of checkboxes. Put an audio recording there, which means very practical for some students. You type your note during the class, but at some point you, you know this is critical, that some incredible news about the class is going to come, about the exam, something you want to store word for word. You click audio, and while you're typing, Evernote will also record what is being said by the instructor so that you have both your notes, but you can also go back to the recording uh, and you have a code block where nothing is um, formatted. You have a sketch, which means that at some point, if I have a tablet, I can switch to my pen and copy a diagram that the instructor put on the board to go with the notes that I'm typing. Google Drive means that I can bring in files, Google Docs, etc., bring them into this, and they will be indexed as well. I'll stop here for now. I'll see you on Monday. Have a nice weekend.